Welcome to Reading the Green. My name is Mike. Kyle, Jordan here in a new recording location. I like it. Good vibe going on. We'll call this the Patio Pod. Patio Pod. Uh, We'll see how it works. Uh, Apologize in advance for any audio issues. Uh, We tested it. We think it works. Patio Pod brought to you by... Uh, yes, we are sponsored, not sponsored, uh, by Thermacell, the <laughs> digital mosquito repellent. Uh, we're going to run it all night uh, as we record, and we'll see. We'll see if you guys get any bites. We'll, we'll count the number of bites. And Kyle claims that he doesn't get mosquito bites. Well, I, I do, but they don't really bother me. It's a little different. Is it because but... he can't pronounce the word mosquito, so he doesn't want to <laughs> say this it? Is, that's yeah. part of it. Part of it. <laughs> but this is, ri- this is a big risk to take in Minnesota. It's a we, big risk it, to take where uh, the no sun is breeze. setting. No, no breeze. The sun is setting. It's about 85 degrees. And uh, the only thing we didn't do is put like a lantern on the table. So um, I think you can see us. we got the hockey game going on in the background. Uh, it's what, 6-1? to 7-2. 7-2. Seven seven two. Two. So that'll game will be over. We'll watch the, the Golden Knights celebrate a Stanley Cup championship. And we'll talk about the U.S. Open. Just such a great week to talk about golf. Uh, But before we do that, Jordan, uh, it sounds like you have some some challenges today. Do you want to, what can we help you with? Uh, You know, I'm having some issues with shaft selection. Okay. Uh, I I need to pick out a couple of new wedges. And, you know, I'm used to one shaft. I don't know any of these new shafts. I'm not used to playing and, you know, playing with new shafts. So I've been asking Mike and Kyle all day for help with my shaft selection. Yeah, you sent a few pictures. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can bring my shaft out right now if you want me to. I'm not sure how that's going to help. You got to look and see what I play now and compare it to my shaft options. (laughs) I mean, I can tell you what I got. You're not very familiar with your current shaft. No, no. (laughs) Have you tried asking your wife? (laughs) She's less familiar than I am. Uh, so you're, co- you're, you're the, going to be the proud owner of two new Vokey wedges and so yes. you're questioning what shaft you get. Yeah. How do I, I, wedges, I don't I think normally it matters. Buy what's, yeah. And I think so I buy the standard shaft and, but now I've got options and I don't know what, I don't think, don't you, I think do. those options are for like, I mean, there was like an ultra light option on there. So yes, I don't even know what that is. I don't think is. you That's want for old Bryson people. shaft. Stay away from the Bryson shaft. Yeah, Cause all Bryson <laughs> shafts are the same shaft. I just asked <laughs> I would say, I, I, I know I was meant to ask the pros tonight, but they close up before men's sure. league is done so they can do the tallying and stuff. And then I didn't, I was going to, I honestly, I, I had to cancel cause I ended up playing golf uh, Memorial day weekend, but I had a wedge fitting with the Titleist fitter scheduled. And I actually had never done a wedge fitting like you're saying. And so I was actually really curious to see like how they fit. I was mostly curious on like how they fit the grinds, you know, how you have like, the digger grind yeah. and the the high bounce, you know, the, you know, obviously the bounce measurements and all that. Um, but I don't know. I guess I, you know, I, yeah, probably, I wouldn't think shafts. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. Wedge, yeah. Just well, don't do many wedge full swings. Anyway. Yeah, something less stiff than your irons is probably appropriate, which we mm-hmm. also discovered today are all about two degrees strong. Yeah. Which uh, all Callaways. You, I saw, I saw this, all Callaways are kind of, all of them are that same setup so you, like taylor made it varies from game improvement to like their sure. blades callaway every single the one. first thing you said when you got those irons was oh my god i hit these so far yeah and then I, you sent me the loss and i was like these are all like two degrees strong from standard yeah. uh but you know that's how you, that's how that's why everyone hits their callaways further <laughs> that's a sneaky little marketing play i know right but there. then he's questioning he's questioning where to fit a gap wedge in and you're telling me you want a 50 degree gap wedge and i was just like or 48 degree gap wedge i was yeah. like that feels awfully strong yeah but that's where the gap is interesting that's what, that's what i've got all right well uh equipment junkies part two in the books right there trying to you know jordan you just you always got such cool equipment yeah just talking about shafts shafts and head covers All right, we didn't get to it last week, and this is probably like the perfect in the U.S. Open. It's just such a it's such a great week, just about the the kind of purity of golf, and uh, not to like give too much credit to the USGA, but it's just like one of the few weeks where you really get to look at the amateur game and the professional game all together. It certainly has made me forget about this whole (laughs) merge. Uh, Oh, there have been some interesting things that have come out in the last week. I won't get into it, but just some of the backstory of the deal making. But um, we wanted to talk last week about the longest day in golf, the the sectional qualifying process. And I don't know, Kyle, you had a couple of notes about just uh, kind of some of the guys that made it through sectional qualifiers and some of the interesting things that happened. What, what, uh, what do you want to highlight? Yeah, it was fun Monday. I don't think I had paid as much attention to the full field in the past like i've 
maybe latched onto one person and wanted to make it through. But, you know, the Golf Channel at six o'clock, I'm prepping dinner and they're they're live streaming. I think some of it almost looked like from someone's phone. The, oh, yeah. I the, mean, they like fanned out like all their resources. Yeah. To, like, yeah. Cover, you know, 11 sites. Do you, I can't remember. I, I had it ready last week. Who made that crazy shot? Uh, that oh, I don't remember. It was, it, it was, it was the same. It was the same qualifier as uh, um, Sebastian Munoz. Sebastian Munoz. Yeah. I think it was, is Rockville, Maryland, maybe, but the dude was, it looked like one of the bunkers you'll see this week, right? The like the longer grass into the bunker, and he was caught in it, had a super awkward stance, hit it 50 yards high and 20 yards forward, and made a great shot and, and made the putt to advance. And it kept my boy Ben Coles out, who I wanted to make it because of Rainmaker. That, <laughs> you would have had another rare card playing yeah, in the field. It was Michael Brennan, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, at the Rockville, Maryland. But it was just, it was kind of cool to see a lot of these amateurs and guys come through. Uh, yeah, obviously, there was some live guys uh, that made it through too. Sebastian Munoz. Yeah, Sergio cleaned up, I think, in one of his qualifiers. Uh, was he previous to, like, was he not this past week? I think he was like, uh, oh, was he a couple week weeks ago? Before? Sure. But yeah, I just, I, some of the names here this week that you'll hear us talk about tonight that made it through on, on qualifying Carlos Ortiz. Uh, Andrew Savoida, we'll talk about Sam Stevens, Taylor Pendrith, Nick Hardy, Dylan Wu, uh, Vincent Norman, Brian Gerard, and then a lot of names I've never heard of before, including one that got elevated to me uh, in this process because it shows up as North Oaks, Minnesota. And uh, when he was in the old Chatham Club of Durham, North Carolina, he qualified there. But Frankie Kappen. Uh, who we've looked into a little bit now to figure out who this guy is. <laughs> well, I know I've seen his name on some of the the Minnesota events leaderboards. He may have finished first or second at the state open recently. Um, obviously, a really good player played at Alabama and Florida Gulf Coast. Uh, yeah, it's fun to have a guy like that to to root for. Maybe he makes the cut. Um, but that's the thing. Like, it's just at the end of the day, you get this group of players that got in from you know the ground up including professionals i always think it's really interesting like kind of would obviously never make it to a sectional qualifier yeah. but uh to show up and then get dusted by some like veteran pga tour player that shoots 65 65 and <laughs> you have no chance but i think it'd be so cool to uh to do that i saw that there was a a kid this is just on twitter that had made it and they were you know someone was commenting about this guy like you know this is this he's not a he's not a college uh golfer he just picked up the game as an adult got good enough made it through local got to sectional got paired with davis love the third that's cool uh now davis love then withdrew (laughs) (laughs) i don't know who the other person was i just felt really bad for the guy but um yeah that kind of stuff can happen that's pretty cool it's one way to do it. Yeah, and there's just uh, it, it can go work in the inverse too, right? These no names or amateurs or somebody like that. Like just the one site that a lot of the pros played at was in Columbus, Ohio. Yeah, that's always big because right the Royal was. Yep. Yeah, so a lot of guys got through there. Davis Thompson, Eric Cole, Luke Gliss, Patrick Rogers, Stuart Sink, uh, Kevin Streelman. So, but then there's that's also the PGA Tour leaderboard right there. But then you have not, Olin Brown. Not an elevated event though. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Great point. But then you have Olin Brown Jr. I know nothing about. Do you? Olin Brown, I think, was a PGA Tour pro journeyman. Okay, he he's uh, he won the site eleven under. You have Nick Dunlap, an amateur, and David (laughs) Nagevel. Kyle, you're you were on a roll tonight. Pre pod, you were on a roll. In fact, you're such on a roll with your pronunciation that my wife even commented on it before you came over. Before we sat down. So okay, (laughs) NYF. J-A-L-L. Olin Brown's good dad was also a PGA Tour player. Really? Yeah. Yes. And still plays on the Champions Tour. That's right. Isn't probably that what I just said? Olin p- plays. No, this is Olin Brown Jr. This is Jr. This you is Jr. This, you say his dad was a journeyman or he yeah. was a journeyman? His dad was a journeyman. Oh, well, he also is because he's 34 and no one's ever heard of him. <laughs> but before I derail this there, to my point, like those guys be Lucas Glover, EVR, Cameron Champ, uh, yeah. the Aaron Badley, so like Kevin Chappell. Chris Goddard up and a whole bunch of others, but there's, you know, they beat out a lot of people, David Lingmer to, to make it. There's a I, lot I of guys. Think, at that I thing. think the golf channel was, if this didn't happen one day before the professional golf world imploded more or less, um, it's such a cool feature. 
Like, I don't mm-hmm. think this has been in the events in the past where they've really covered it the way that they covered it yeah. uh, this year. And so that's what I think it's such a great lead into the U.S. Open because it really helps you embrace, like, what the U.S. Open is. Then you put it on a golf course, like we're going to talk about here after the Canadian, but you put it on a golf course like Los Angeles Country Club that no one really knows a lot about, and it just feels like this big celebration of of American golf. So I'm really excited about it. And, uh, and I, I'm certainly looking forward to watching and then... And kind of seeing that unfold. So uh, before we talk about the Canadian Open, we got a lot of beers sitting on the table here. Kyle, yeah. can we start with, uh, what was this? <laughs> I'm not going to turn to that. <laughs> <laughs> this was uh, a Barrel Theory DDH Crowler uh, Mecca Hopzilla. Uh, Nelson, Sylvan, and Citra. That, and Simcoe, Cryo. That was really good. Um, Very good. And then, you know what? I was a really nice host at the Patio Pod. And... You guys drink. I was out of town this week. And you guys drank my last uh, IPA. That was what, Jordan? Galactic Falconer by Junkyard. Junkyard, delicious. Yeah, but I took the Roselle. I know I had Roselle on the pot a couple weeks ago, but Fair State Roselle is a solid hibiscus sour. Well, didn't you say that your your significant other drank the last of the other good IPAs also? I mean, that's usually what happens. So that's why I'm lucky. My wife doesn't drink <laughs> beer, let alone good beer. So. I, I, drink I, I think I've served her Coors Light recently. Oh, uh, yeah. That's, <laughs> she sees it on tap. She's like, ooh, I was at the mm-hmm. Upper Deck Golf that we did. Mm. How about la- last topic? I know you yeah, guys yeah, might yeah, yeah. that. What uh, What did you think? I heard Kyle's take, Jordan. What? Uh, uh, it was fun. I mean, it's not really golf at all. You get 18 shots over nine different holes, and there's no s- scoring. Like It's just the experience. So this, yeah. is, this is in stadiums yeah it, so it, it, we did it in target field uh the nine different tee off areas and different areas of the concourse on all three levels we it's hit very them first cool. like high up nine different greens you're supposed to hit at on the field and like build them above that they're like kind of like mobile and they no no they, they, they were they just mow the grass okay. yeah they just had holes right no the, yeah, they, that kind of surprised me yeah uh, i plugged a couple like coming down just yeah. plugged right in yeah. and now byron buxton's gonna because it rained was, right before it was me out it rained heavily at like 5 p.m it seems like we're something upper step. deck golf should just be like rolling in yeah it was uh I, it, it was it was a cool concept there's a dude out there in like full like catchers slash hockey gear oh yeah helmet pushing around the thing to <laughs> push the ball he's just pushing like a, a broom with extensions on it yeah gathering the balls yes jordan um jordan had some trouble with his distances uh we'll just put it that way because you have everything from like 60 yard holes i think was the shortest yeah maybe there's a 40 yep. to like 130 yeah maybe. and they give you they give you the balls they're all flighted down mm-hmm. Uh, but you can still hit an eight iron a long way. <laughs> uh, made a couple in, can hit a couple home runs. Let's just say there's plenty of areas where there weren't people that I could swing my, the Nike. Vapors. I mean, 400 feet is only 130 yards. Yeah. So but you're also like upper deck. No, I know. Like, but like, they did, and they, they did good about, uh, kind of with the wind. Yeah. You, you, the longer shots were into the wind. Yes. I did hit one yeah. and Kyle looks at me and goes, I got it was slicing I right punctured. into the paintball. Yeah. And it did, it hit the wall like <laughs> probably 20 yards short of them. So it wasn't going to get there. But if yeah, people walked up the walkway to right center, you went across to dead center. Yep. And you're covered by most of that, but we're hitting in that direction. And yeah. It was right at that walkway. I put one off the video board that was above the first set of seats, <laughs> which <That's>... hopefully. <laughs> It it not, break knocked out a few LEDs <laughs> and it bounced on the green. Yeah, it did. Off, it, of the, it, off of the light. Wall. It, it was, uh, it was the it best was a shot thing I to do. Yeah. I think they do it in Seattle, some other places. Mm-hmm. So if you get a chance, I mean, I don't. I would know definitely bring my own shitty golf balls to take a few extra shots. <laughs> so like no one. Funny. Yeah, no one's checking. No, there yeah. some volunteers yeah. sitting. They're there like your ushers you. at the Twins game. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Well, speaking of combining sports, um, why don't we transition to the Canadian Open, which. I don't know if you guys watched it all, but you know they they really really embrace hockey. Yeah, the, the hockey Canadian, rink. Yeah, at the Canadian Open, the I rink, watched a lot. Yeah. yeah, the rink was was a cool concept. Uh, people were really hooting, hollering on that par three. They had a couple of like bits with tour players off the course uh, and and hockey. And I feel like every Canadian player that they interviewed, including Nick Taylor, said something along the lines of when I stopped playing hockey to focus on golf, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like really, really made them feel like ultra Canadian. Um, 
is this the most incredible finish we'll see all year? That's a good question. Yes. Well, there could be other ones that are maybe more dramatic. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I mean, just, sure. you can't so, make, what was that putt? 72 feet. 72 feet. That's not going to happen. The, For the difficulty of winning that winning shot won't be beat this yeah. year. And, Canadian, and it's been so long. And the long and the Adam Hadwood stuff yeah. right yeah. out. Great ending. Yeah. Great uh, ending. It was like all of that together was like you couldn't make that up. Just wait till next year. That's going to happen at like Trump Doral with Chase Kepka beating <laughs> Scotty Scheffler. It's going to be great. It was. Uh, and obviously uh, Nick Taylor. The first Canadian since 1959. I get there. I don't. I think that's about the. I think it's 69 years was the 1954. The last time that a Canadian won the National Open in Canada, um, he started plus three. He yeah, was plus three on Thursday, and he said he got a talking to from his wife. Uh, comes out and shoots a big five under on Friday, and then lights it up on Saturday, and then hangs around. And I think I wasn't watching until later on Sunday. Um, but I think, Kyle, you you commented, you know, they did the walk and talk. Yeah. And you're like, he grabs the lead and they go walk and talk. And yeah. They, he committed to that on Saturday. He did. Night. He did say so that. They, they, press but I, I, that's awesome. He stuck with it. I was watching close because I had a lot of Nick Taylor this week. And so I had him, in, you know, in my starred pool on uh, the PGA app and Saw saw him heating up on Saturday. I think I sent you guys the nuclear yeah. instead of the in fuego, <laughs> like when, with the nuclear symbol. But just an impressive round with him. It, but how much I had in Nick Taylor, I wish I should have done a better week. But alas, it was the rounds were it was a birdie fest, right? It like people, it, it wasn't as shooting. bad as I thought it was. Be. It was like yeah, but it was like one offs, and you're like holy shit, the that, rounds are out there. Six, Didn't, 63 was out there, yeah. Was it what it wasn't it Eric Cole? Was it Sunday? He, he shot, shot like he shot, he was nine, yeah. absurd, yeah. but then everyone else just passed him by. It, it was interesting, um, to seeing how the golf course played. I actually, uh, what's funny, so I tuned into the last few holes, I think I actually recorded them, so I watched them later in the evening, and I thought that when Fleetwood birdied 17. I thought that I saw him with a wedge in his hand. I thought he got up and down for par. And then I didn't realize that 18 was a par five because I was on a tunnel weekend. So I didn't really tune in until the end. Oh, so yeah. I saw these guys hitting iron and then uh, everyone going after the green. And I was like, oh, well, that's just a short par four. And so I, I was really confused on how the scoring was shaking out. But it made me think about how you said like this, that you were surprised that there was a PGA Tour event at this golf course. And so I was wondering like, man, a 499 yard finishing par five in which guys are hitting iron off the tee. Yeah, people are hating on it. That, and, and so I was thinking, I'm like, oh my God, like what a trash hole. Like this is threes and fours all day. I'm sure the scoring was. It produced a decent amount of drama at the end of regulation and then the four playoff holes. I think it actually kind of held its own a little bit, probably because Tommy Fleetwood like choked away a number of opportunities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it probably didn't play that difficult. But I I I was for being a late comer to the the event on Sunday, I was scratching my head on what that 18th hole was. Yeah. I'm um, glad you brought that up. To Jordan's point uh as well, like I think the scoring changed out through the, throughout the week. And I think that's a good thing for us to keep in mind this week too. The guys figured it out, of mm -hmm. course. Thursday, you didn't see those super low scores. Everyone's kind of surprised. But then every day, more and more guys went super low. So yeah. a thing to file and away for this week. A, it's not a hard course. Like, if it, you figure it out and play good, yeah. you're going to score well. Versus, like, a U.S. Open, you can figure it out and still shoot plus five. So that's that's yeah. I think that is the difference between, like, your kind of average course that, you know, we all play at. That, like, you know, yeah. people love to be like, oh, like, what would we could totally trick this out for a professional. They figure this stuff out pretty quickly. That's what, like I said, that's what yeah. makes like a U.S. Open challenge really interesting is what the USGA can do day to day to keep confusing people. Yeah. But then to, like to talking to set up 18, I think they could have even playing as a par five. I think they could have done a little bit better with the setup. And yeah, it would like a PGA Tour event to have a 480 yard par mm -hmm. five would seem super weird. But if they would have moved the tees up. And bring driver into play with some people. Like, I mean, the guys want to try to take on that creek. Yeah, because I think there was only like four, 
the one for I forget uh, uh, the one bomber. I can't think of his name. I bet it wouldn't it. change the. I bet you wouldn't have more birdies. I bet you just have more bogeys. Correct, because yeah. you you catch a guy because you had a you had to fly at three twenty, mm -hmm. so no one did it. But if you you make well, it so you only have to fly at three oh five, maybe you guys would have went after uh, it. the way that they built those grandstands around the greens. You just throw three wood up there anywhere. It's going to bounce and off. And it's going to bounce off or you're going to get relief. I mean, I know Fleetwood's the one that he hit in the grandstand. It wasn't a great angle at the hole, but like there was zero risk of hitting a bad shot. Yeah. Um. Anyways, uh, Fleetwood. Yeah, go ahead. All right. Hold her. I'm just I can't get it I, this week. I, w I was all sorts of set up. Is that you or him? Uh, well, <laughs> him as well. Just. <laughs> All over it from an outright, outright perspective this week at Hubbard, at Fleetwood, at Rose. Just just can't quite get there. I can't. We'll, we'll find yeah, it. We'll that, find is it. A, that is a bummer. Yeah. At least you had enough of Nick Taylor and DFS. Um, RTG Housekeeping, uh, Listener League, Andy Dingas taking down the top spot. D Moss 62 in second. Uh, I've had a bit of a streak. I picked up third place. I've had a nice couple of that. thirds and a W. Um, but my frustration, Kyle, I was six of six, and no one else in the RTG Listener League was six of six, and I barely clipped third. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, kind of the same deal on the uh, on the model this week. I feel like made a ton of cuts. Felt like I was in good position. Just the uh, the weekend, I was I had a six of six core and a twenty max. And uh, I think I was positive about a uh, dollar. Yeah, that's <laughs> just rough. I, I finally had a good Saturday because actually I was looking really bad. I about Friday. Nick Taylor. That was yeah. really Well, what uh, were the landmines this week, Mike? Uh, yeah, that's a that's a good question. I probably should have had that fired up. Um, there was one. We missed one cut in the in the top on the top echelon uh ben martin who people were all over and that one really hurt me too yeah that one really hurt me i know that i went and played uh i had a nice lineup in the discord gated uh our rainmakers contest um he was the guy i swung and missed on otherwise it was pretty good pretty good showing two others that i had uh, a little bit in gpp lineups or single entry lineups: sam burns and adam svensson Heard as well. Uh, they were a little lower in the model, so you know, trying to get a little different there. That that burned me. And if just would have stuck a little bit higher with our with our Hatton, our Eric Cole, our Justin Rose, our Mark Hubbard, our Rory plays, uh, who were all guys north of forty percent, had a lot of love, and they're all guys that finished in top ten of scoring for the week. Um, the other guy that I just thought kind of. I didn't actually see much of his round, but Mackenzie Hughes shoots, uh, I think he was 60, 69, 77, something Ooh. like that. Tough to do in your National Open to just back it up Ooh. and miss the cut. Uh, but yeah, uh, just I give a shout out to who was on Nick Taylor last week. Brendan Gadula at number fire. Uh, Landon Slinsky at Fantasy Labs Cash Play. We, I, if you've been following on our Twitter, Landon has been on fire uh, for single injuries. I, yeah, you know, we had went back and forth with him a little bit. Uh, John over at the Lions preview and uh, Byron, uh, the model maniac at Betsberts was all over Nick Taylor. Yeah, John Hazelbauer, the Lions uh, getting our uh, top contributor of the week. That was, I think, his first win on the year. So good stuff there. Um, I want to transition to the U.S. Open. First of all, mosquito check. How's it? How's the thermos open? We can't skip. Oh, I'm sorry. One and done. We can't skip your performance in one and done, Mike. You just you're really trying to skip over this more and more. Um, I can't. I, we have a new leader in the uh, new last place. Well, I you know, there there were only two people that made zero dollars this week. One of them being um, Cross Michael Koziak. Uh, who picked Sam Burns? Do you think that would be a pretty safe pick? To you really the think? Money? But then he misses the cut of the number, and what are you going to do? I did like the pick. I'm not going to lie. I liked it. Low, low ownership. We got to take some swings. I, I, I didn't mind it. Yeah, and Kyle only beat you by thirty nine thousand dollars. I was going to say. So, <laughs> uh, yes, there was no one picked Nick Taylor. We had one Springman picked Tommy Fleetwood, and then a boatload of pick, people picked Tyrrell Hatton. But second place got nine hundred thousand. Third place got 477, so it wasn't a, not a lot it. of movement going on. John jumped to uh, number one. He is by two, 300,000. Uh, Champles is also getting close. He's within 800,000. Mm. Uh, otherwise, then it gets down over three and a half million, which 
you're not out of it, you just got to hit winners. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? This it's, is a good week to do it. The other um, three guys just need money. The rest of us need winners. Can I comment on uh, on TMK after climbing into the fifth place spot, decided not to submit a pick last week? Oh, bull trap. Um, is bull he trap- anti-Canadian? I'm not sure. Uh, he, got a, he won as much money as you did last I week. I know. I followed up and I said, what was the deal there? And he said, it's not an elevated event. doesn't really matter. Okay. <laughs> just, <laughs> okay. Okay. He just does not like Canadian service. Uh, um, well, Mike, just so you know, you're you're now down to fourth from last. I know. Uh, but luckily, there's AM right nine is even more trash than you are. Has only submitted thirteen picks, and only has thirteen million dollars. Is thirteen million dollars behind? This place. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Tur- so, I'm winning this week. I keep I keep getting dropping down because I haven't had any big money ones in a while. I'm getting a dub right here. All right, Kyle's calling it. Uh, let's get to the long-awaited U.S. Open. Uh, first of all, mosquito bites. Anyone? Mosquito bites. Thermosel holding up. I just swatted one away from my mm-hmm. right arm, which is probably the furthest away from it. So <laughs> it's still, supposed to still be a good. 20 foot radius. So I will say, but earlier I was feeling mosquitoes like and I was like brushing them off here and there. I feel like it's I haven't, I haven't. All right. Let's see. Any off. Good stuff, Thermosel. All right. The U.S. Open at Los Angeles Country Club in Los Angeles, California. Uh, our past winner at the Country Club in Brookline, Massachusetts, Matt Fitzpatrick. He will be in the field along with pretty much everybody else uh, looking at a great field this week. Kyle, um, there's a lot of content out there about the Los Angeles Country Club history, mm-hmm. the redesign, the overheads, um, the fried egg, uh, the fried egg. Uh, Twitter feed has like a 20 minute video on it. That's probably one of the better ones that I've seen. I loved it. Um, I don't know. I think everyone's uh, everyone's going to hear, you know, Varenka, uh, you know, a bajillion times this week. But how do you sum up Los Angeles Country Club? Overall, I'm I'm excited, which I would say most of the community is. And especially the golf nerds really seem to be excited about this one from a, a course design layout perspective. It's not like uh, anything we we've seen before. Uh, it doesn't have a direct comp. You know, people are kind of throwing out Augusta over a little bit. In a cock. Oh, um, yeah. Heard what? In a hop. <laughs> <laughs> Augusta from the wide fairways, the undulation. Um, but that's not. That's kind of a squinting comp. Uh, Royal Melbourne, I did hear get thrown out on a okay. comp day. And then if you're looking for a U.S. Open course, Chambers Bay, uh, okay. without the bumper bumpy yeah. greens, but like just some of the general. You have a lot of room off the tee, but you that doesn't mean you can be anywhere. You kind of need to be in a certain area to be able to approach a green a certain way. But there's also a lot of holes where. I think we're going to see a lot of different strategies play out. And mm-hmm. I think that that's one thing that makes me excited. Like, for example, you no know, hole six uh, is a drivable par four, but it's blind. It's uphill. Uh, it's a huge fairway, but you can, so you can try to mash it and to come in from uh, one side or you can lay up, come from the other. There's just a lot of different things you can do. So, yeah, I think that's where we talk about the USGA being able to do. And there's two par threes that play 270 and over. Wow. And if you're listening to this, you're going to hear a train in the background. That never happens around here. Um, the uh, the ability for the USGA to go, you know, 270 yards, 240 yards, 290 yards, talk about full six. Um, it's going to be a puzzle all four days. And I think that's uh, that's not what you get at a place like Oakdale Country Club, uh, where guys just figure it out. They're, they're going to get in. They even talked about, and I know this was shot down, they talked about having some of the par fives play as par fours some days, um, which I think the USGA ultimately did not want to yeah. do. But um, I think it's going to be a, it's going to be a chess match like the US Open is every year. Um, the, when I first saw the overheads of this course, I didn't know where the fans are going to go. I don't think there's going to be many. Yeah. In the sounds of it. It, it. They didn't sell very many. It, it, I heard uh, that most of the tickets feel like they're going to like corporate and, and member tickets and there aren't going to be very many sold to the general public. But just even like where people stand, mm-hmm. there's so many there's so much sort of like like dry area and the branca and all that. Like. There isn't going to be a lot of room for spectators, it seems like. Well, and I think 
I think some of that's good though, because a lot of people are gonna, or a lot of the players are gonna try to take different lines. So if you had all this trumpled down area, yep. which we've seen in some courses, that that allows the guys to spray it and get out uh, of luck. But I, yeah, I'm excited to see it. It, it like close, like similar to Riv, you, we start out with an easy par five, and then there's a super hard par four. There's a drivable par four. There's a 290 yard par three, mm-hmm. followed by a 290 yard par four. Awesome. <laughs> I, 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 not that I could even reach the green on that par three, but and it's but it's different grass than Riv. You know, it, it there's is. no we'll talk about that. Oa and Kakuya. It, it's just there's all sounds like there's going to be a lot of options, which creates a lot of different shots. So that's fun. How can you pronounce grasses that well but not people's names? <laughs> it's, a, it's a fair point. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah. I do wonder. Um, I've seen. I've I've heard the Riv comparison, and I know that's partly just proximity. Um, but I do see the Riv guys popping in the model. I know we'll get to the model here in a second. Yeah. But the Australians, um, guys like uh, Joaquin Neiman, they seem to be getting love, and I feel like it's because of their success in. Los Angeles area golf courses, but this is not your typical Los Angeles area golf course. I agree. Um, so anyways, Cal, why don't you give us, uh, give us the top of the model surprises, no surprises. One more fun fact for Jordan Ooh. on the course. Do you know what you can see from the 13th green, Jordan? Uh, the Playboy Mansion. Yes. <laughs> hey, you did some research. <laughs> no, not at all. I just assumed. Oh, really? No. Did you not see the swag uh, announcement? Oh, I did. I didn't know that. I just thought it was L.A. No, there's like a Playboy bunny on it. Yeah. It says this is why the mansion was built on a golf course or something like oh. that. Oh. Um, but now yeah. it's like a bird and monkey but, sanctuary. But when he <laughs> when he asks me, and when either of you ask me specific questions, I know it's usually <laughs> <laughs> inappropriate responses only allowed. So, oh, great work. Yeah, yeah. that was very quick too. It was right off the cuff. I, like I have it. actually done some. I've watched some videos and stuff on the course. No, I didn't. Hadn't seen that. So nothing yet. to add then on the. Uh... On the Playboy Mansion? Yeah, well, no, I've never, I didn't ever. You didn't research, there. Did you I didn't research, research on that in one my, <laughs> in my 20s. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kyle. All right, model, model. Uh, leading the way so far, I don't think any of the top two names would surprise anyone. I have 45% mention share. We have Scotty Scheffler and Victor Hovland. Uh, MPI likes Victor a lot more than Scotty at this point in time. Right behind. Now we have four others coming in the 30% range. We have Mr. Hatton at 35%, Brooks at 30, Decky at 30, and Wyndham Clark at 30. A little bit of variation in MPI right now. Brooks is the favorite of our MPI at 74 of those four individuals. So some of the research that I did sort of do five minutes ago while on Twitter, uh, Scotty Scheffler is testing out a new putter this week. And is debating if he's going to use it or not. Well, it can't be any worse, right? Exactly. He's like ranked in the hundreds of yeah. Shots he's so awful. But that's a that's a that's a big change to be uh, changing putters before you get on these greens. Uh, it is. It's almost like Jason Day, who's putting a whole new set of irons in his bag uh, this week because the other ones just spun a little too much. Just spun a little. Yeah. Much. Yeah. Um, I don't know that that there was some there was some comments on Twitter of that just being like just such just like a screwball strategy of how can you just change your clubs entirely for a gigantic golf tournament? But, well, like, but they probably do it all. They probably do it more than we to think. and from. He's going from the MCs to the TWs. So it, it's it, like yeah, yeah, the different, and he's probably hit the TWs for six months already. Probably yeah, just has a put yeah. in. Um, and I know this because of you know I changed clubs last year and I just. I didn't even go to the range after I got my new ones. I just went out and played, and I played better than the four else. degrees <laughs> different lot. <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> All right, before we get into picks, let's open another another round. So I got two here. We'll we'll split them. We got Fair State Pills, that my go to, but then Falling Knife Maplewood uh, Convivio Italian Pills. All right, oh. both a little. Lighter. That sounds like a uh, what's the Peroni? Peroni. Yeah. I'll go with that. I don't. I mean, I know the the Fair State Pills is your uh, standby. Well, we'll each give Jordan. Yeah, I mean, I, you want me to mix, just... you want me to mix them? Yeah. Oh. No, you guys can finish the rest. There you go. That's, yeah, Kyle rode his bike here. Oh, yeah, Kyle biked here. Yeah, I biked. <laughs> I gotta make sure my lights. Kyle, what street so, did you turn on? I took a lot of different streets. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay. Anyway, so Xerxes. <laughs> uh, plays this week. I think this will change a little bit at the top of the board tomorrow. Uh, I, I'm I'm surprised how spread out everything is so far. I guess that makes sense. Of course, we we don't know a ton about, and uh, people are making some guesses on. But I think, especially from a cash standpoint, I I have to start with Brooks. Uh, mm. Second and first at, at majors this year. Is this a prove me wrong pick? Like possibly, but he's had great history at U.S. Open outside of the the two years of injury weirdness. Uh, so yes, he's ten eight. But our MPI likes him. He's 74 right now. Jaeger bombs over at DFSR is on him. Hockberg at Roto Wire is on him. So if he gets some love tomorrow from some of our big guns that come in a little late, like uh, McKay over at Fantasy Pros, I think I have to I have to start there. And you save a little bit of money off Scotty, and it, and especially with the unknowns on his spotter. Starting with Brooks uh, next. I'm going Adam Scott as my savings, 7,500. I, like we said, he's 30% on the mention share. Not as great on the MPI so far, but Hans Grievers over at uh, Pro Golf now. And I, I just like his mentality in an event like this. You know, one thing I didn't highlight earlier in this course, everyone seems to think there's plenty of birdies out there. Mm-hmm. So I think you're going to see some good scores, but I, there's a lot of trouble out there. Like, too. yeah, where. There's bogeys and doubles. It's yeah. the U.S. Open course. So it's the green, you get a bogey or yeah, double. The, the bunkers look a bit they, the, yeah. ridiculous. If you end up in a, in a, a shitty spot. I mean, there's an 80 yard part. Well, can yeah. play 80 yards part three as well. But if you miss that green, you're you're dead. So I, I think 74, 65 is perfectly possible or or the inverse. So I wouldn't get too worked up about where where guys sit on Thursday, but tying that back to Adam Scott, I think he's just going to be kind of the steady Eddie is my hope. Uh, you know, 69, 69, 69 type type rounds. Really? <laughs> and then lastly, I am, am very surprised he's not getting more love than this, but I really like Jordan Speed this week. 9,200. Uh, 20% of the mission share at this point in time. Uh, Mayo's on him. Uh, Fan sided, who's been pretty hot for us late recently. Cody Williams over there is on him. Uh, teaser, I have a bet on Speeth, but I like Speeth, guys. What number did you get Speeth at? 28. Yeah, that's. I think he's still there. Yeah. Um, Damon talked a lot about Speeth this week and that you know he believes this golf course is going to require a certain amount of creativity. Um, especially when you get around the greens, um, you combine that with some of the conversation around this golf course requiring a lot of precision. Um, it's not just, are you in the fairway, with big fairways, but you know, one side of the fairway, we, you've seen the videos of the balls rolling from the middle of the fairway yep. into the rough just by being dropped two feet. Um, so it's precision through the game. And I think someone like Spieth just sees things differently. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's, uh, that's a really interesting Interesting angle. I I do I do wonder if his love will increase, but I love betting him and I love playing him in DFS. Um, a couple other guys that I got uh, just kind of looking into, um, you know, Denny McCarthy right now charting out at 86 on our power index, so crossing into that 80 plus range, which we've been very it has has brought us a lot of success. Um, I know he's been playing well lately. A second at the Memorial, as he lost in the playoff. He was top ten at the Wells Fargo. Um, we'll give him a top eleven, you know, eleventh at the uh, at the Zurich. I don't know. Denny's been putting really well lately. Last several events, putting really well. That can pay off at a U.S. Open. Um, I don't know that he's that he's there, tee to green, um, but has some decent form. I, I'm I'm lukewarm on Denny despite the model so far the one guy that I think is really interesting uh and I know Gaiman talked him up and I didn't really do my research but the stats just kind of wow me at this point um there's a guy sitting here at $7,100 who has six top 20s in his last seven events that surprises me Russell Henley going back to the players T19, T17, T4, T19, cut at the PGA Championship. I mean, he finished fourth at the Masters, uh, 16th at the Schwab, 16th at the Memorial, um, gaining 
well over a stroke per event um, on approach. Um, and really the putter is there. So the the strokes gain metrics across the board outside of the PGA Championship where he was Russell with the putter, um, gaining strokes, which Russell's t- traditionally team no putt. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I'm curious where we think ownership might land for a guy at 7,100 who's got six top 20s in his last seven events. Um, Russell Henley is intriguing. Um, He's going to show up. He's going to chart pretty low on our power index because I think he's going to get a lot of love from the value articles that just don't perform as well. But um, he's a guy that I might kind of go contrarian on the model and look at Henley as a as a value play. I like it. I like it, especially at the value at seventy one hundred. I have a guy to bring up down there later after okay. after Jordan goes yeah. here. Jordan, additional thoughts, players that you're leaning on. Uh, I'm going to go the opposite way, uh, and you know. It seems like people are real high on the live tour right now. Yeah, I am. There are five players in our top 20 in the model, which is uh, for, for the other majors. There's been it's been just Cam and Brooks, DJ. maybe a couple Bryce mentions, a couple DJ mentions. But one of these is going to be a hard fade for me. Just saying. Uh, but yes, within the top 20 in order, Brooks, uh, Bryson, Joaquin, you missed Neiman, Cam. Mito yeah. Cam, I, like, I knew there was yeah. a fifth one, and Mito Pereira, all in the top 20 of the model, uh, which seems aggressive. Uh, I, I get it with the Brooks and Cams of the world. There's good golfers. Yeah. But like, Mito. Coming off in, a third place in D.C. Exactly. I, I, I do like Mito for this week, but I do you have a read on his ownership? 72 feels 7200 feels low i feel like i'm kind of surprised he's not higher in the model because he's getting talked up on some pods okay me interesting more from a I like top 20 bet perspective i would say but yeah i'd be curious uh i'd be curious if we get is it like a like a five percent mito is really intriguing but not a 20 percent mito i don't think he's gonna get there but i think he could push 15 okay. from what i've heard so what right. are you thinking on those guys jordan is there one you like uh, well, I was just trying to fill out my one and done pick here while you guys were talking. Uh, and there's there's some good options like Cam Smith, Brooks. Uh, but that's where I'm going to go with the if I'm picking one of them, I'm going to go with one of the, the big names, especially at a U.S. Open. Right. Mm-hmm. The leaderboard on Sunday is not going to be a whole bunch of no names. Right. Because it's a bear of a course. And you're, if you're good. Find your way towards the top, you know, over a, four days. A no sure. name might win it because they get really hot, but it's not going to be five, six no names in the top 10. Yeah, I don't uh, think so. Yeah, like, that's where you. if you want me to may, hopefully make a cut and get you two extra days worth of points in DFS. Yes. Like, I don't know. There's the studs will be there. I agree. They haven't, and like, yeah. Mito hasn't played a course this hard. I don't know. Was he at the Masters? Which the Masters isn't even is a different sort of hard than this. It was at the Masters. He finished and the, and the PGA yeah. Championship is was more difficult this year than most years. But I still don't think it's going to be. No, but the PGA is different setup. It's kind of the old school. Uh, I would say U.S. Open yeah. setup is bomb and gouge. You just you miss the rough by you miss you're in the rough by a foot. You're in the rough by you know, twenty yards. They're twenty yards. It's the same. Yeah. 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 You had a fade in there. You had a live fade at the top, at the top of the model. That's a perfect lead in to my fade, but I don't buy the Bryson Love this week. It's back to the PGA. I think that's a better the setup. Scientist. So the wing wing foot type approach. But I don't see if you buy the narrative that the sh- creative shot maker that is going to move the ball both ways that mm-hmm. can put it exactly where they want to off the tee to set up their second shot. It's the same reason I don't yeah. buy Cam Smith. Well, I, I like Cam Smith more from the creativity standpoint. We've seen that at Augusta where he can, you know, mm-hmm. the, the battle with Scotty. Uh, so saw it the old course where he can, you know, think. That driver, way. though, that driver gets uh, gets out of whack. He does get a little I, wonky. He does get a little wonky. But, I, you know, Cam Smith, I would say he's probably on my GPP list, not my cash list. But I'm I'm out on Bro- Aaron Bryson. That's fair. Yeah, that's totally. No fair. one will argue against that. Even <laughs> well, if he wins, no one's going to be like, "Ah, Kyle." They're getting some love. They're getting some love. So, but my 
my cheaper play of the week that I'm also surprised isn't getting the, uh, as much love so far is Ryan Fox. He's down to 7,100. His last four starts, the Memorial 30th, Schwab 21st, PGA 23rd, uh, the Masters 26th. Give me that at $7,100 all day. Uh, so maybe look at him top 30. Also this year at the API, he was 14th. Uh, you know, a, a lot of Euro experience before that, which, which he did very well. So I like Ron Fox, 71 on. You want to you wanna dig into tiers? Tier two is probably the one that's given the bi- bi- biggest signal at this time because you have Vic way up the top of the board relative to anyone else. Uh, he's got a lot more love than Xander or Cantlay. Or even Rory. And by the way, we haven't talked about Rory being ninety nine hundred dollars yet this week. You know, but I think, it, or and then Collins also in that tier. I think this is an interesting one to me. That's going to be tough for me to make the click right now on Victor, uh, especially if I have a little of exposure to him elsewhere. I you know, can't lay at this course. Also a California guy. He's played it a little bit. Uh, you know, being UCLA, right, Mike? He was UCLA, yes. Yeah, this is their home course. Mm-hmm. I I, I want to go walk onto their golf program just to play this <laughs> course for yeah. four years. I, I'm, that's going to be hard for me to not go Cantlay. But if the model stays here through tomorrow, I'm going to follow the model and go Vic. But I'm keeping my eye on Cantlay. Yeah, for sure. Um, just one call out, someone that uh, is sitting right now – very much at the bottom of the model uh, is a tier four golfer at $8,700, Justin Thomas. Um, currently garnering 5% of the mention share uh, The uh, coming from uh, Mike McClure. Um, so I, I'm probably firmly off JT. Probably, there probably isn't anything that's going to happen, at least in our model, over the next 24 hours that's going to put me back on JT. You mean other than his 100 MPI right now? It, like, will, it won't stay there. But well, don't trust the, mo- I take don't that trust the model. I take that back. Uh, if no one else mentions him, <laughs> it will stay there. Um, and I, I don't, I just, there's yeah. nothing in his game right now that indicates that he's going to compete this week. He's going to be my captain in Rainmakers just so I can win some money. You can get him at 50 to 1 in the betting market, too. Yeah. Insane wow. numbers on Justin Thomas right now. Um, so if you just want leverage, uh, there it is. All right. The name game. Um, now, it's funny is. We did the name game last week. Uh, we had uh, guys that Kyle had been talking about in the live PGA Tour uh, news. And um, there was a little bit of griping because I put the teams together. Um, and there was kind of one team. And because I finished last, I had to design the game. And because there was one team that stood out, Dylan Wu and Taylor Pendrith, um, I picked them first. They were, yes, $600 cheaper than the next most expensive team, uh, but they ended up running away with it. And I picked up my ninth win on the year, which puts me only two behind Jordan with it, Kyle and the listeners with eight wins. Hey, if you, That's if, tight, if you rig them every week, you can win all of them, I, Mike. It, and I understand that. So we decided to mix it up. Uh, into the bylaws, the RTG bylaws go, if you win the name game, you design the name game. For the next week. So it used to be a punishment. I'm going to start trying a lot less hard now to win this. This is perfect. Because uh, that's going to help us close the gap. Even. So if you win the name game, you design the game, but you pick last. And I think that, you know, then there will be no great. Right, However, right. I like it. This week, um, I had the idea. Since I won, I got to design the game. But you guys did all the work to put it together. <laughs> it was work too. And I, I know. Know. <laughs> but you know, I appreciate the work that went in because what better place to do a name game like famous Hollywood duos than at a golf tournament that is just down the street from Hollywood. Completely so fair. what we have is four famous, semi-famous movies uh, with four famous movie duos uh, turned PGA Tour superstars. Yeah. So Kyle, do you want to? You got you got it up. Do you want to just take us through, or would you like me to handle it? No, you're reading the names <laughs> and 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 tying in the movies. All right. So we're going to start with um, 
We're going to start with In Bruges. Uh, this could have been the Banshees of Anna Sharon as well. We have uh, Colin Farrell, Morikawa, and Brendan Valdez, uh, Brendan Gleason Valdez. Um, so kind of one stud, one scrub. Um, we have a uh, Best Picture winner, Goodwill Hunting, starring Matt Damon Fitzpatrick and Ben Affleck Carr. Um, you could check out Flash Gordon, uh, which stars Max von Sydow Homa and Sam Jones Bennett as Flash Gordon. And lastly, we have Charlie's Angels, starring Cameron Diaz Smith. The classic, the classic in the group. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Anne Drew Barrymore Savota. We needed uh, we needed a female leads. I yeah, like that. Female, I like that. Team. So um, let's see, Kyle, you came in last last week. So where are you going on uh, our famous Hollywood duos? Flash Gordon. Give Flash me Gordon. Give me Maximus Homa and and Samuel Bennett. I actually think Sam Bennett's been playing actually pretty well lately since turning pro. Um, and I think. I wouldn't even mind playing him in DFS at sixty five hundred dollars. I'll have a sprinkle. I'll have yeah. a sprinkle. All right. Um, let's see. I, I should have told us. Looks like um, we would have had the listeners second to last. Uh, do you guys? Do you guys have a team in mind for the listeners? Hmm. Trying to think of why. Well, I, I know Jordan. Do you want to give them Charlie's Angels or Goodwill Hunting? Uh, I feel like ooh, one's a good movie, one's a really, really good. Yeah, movie. but did you want to give them the girls? I know. Or, I'm, yeah. I mean, I was kind of hoping to leave Mike with the ladies. Uh, All right, let's give. He's a big live guy, so you can have Cam Smith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just faded it. So up. let's let's <laughs> go. Let's give the listeners goodwill hunting. Yeah. Okay. We'll show okay. them some goodwill. No, oh, I give very good. Mm, I, I, I don't love Ben Carr like I like Sam Bennett, but um, Fitzpatrick is all right. Yeah. And I made fun of us using In Bruges as an actual movie here because, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm going to pick uh, Morikawa Valdez Farrell Gleason or some. Perfect. That leaves me with Cam Smith and Andrew Zabota. Um, don't even know who that guy is. Good luck to me. He uh, he qualified in the open qualifier. I have at least heard that name. I can't tell you anything about Brendan Valdez or Ben Carr. Ben Carr, I think, lost to Sam Bennett in the U.S. Amateur last year. Okay. So there you go. Um, good stuff, Kyle. Uh, generally, where we finish the show, are you going to bet on the U.S. Open? I might have partaken in some bets. Uh, we already talked about Jordan Spieth. Have Jordan Spieth, but I'm changing it up this week. I'm going outright and first round leader on four guys and then doing some placement parlays just to try to change up the mojo a little bit. So Jordan Spieth, uh, 28 to 1 plus first round leader. Cameron Smith, you can get a 30 out there now, but unfortunately I took it uh, during my travels to Iowa and I cannot yeah. cash that out now. So I have it at 25. In a first round later, I have Adam Scott. Would that surprise you? And based on what I've talked about uh, here tonight, the 75 to one. Hey, that's my long shot. 75 is a good number. Yeah. There. And then I went two units on Xander. Uh, at 18. Not a lot of talk yeah. about Xander, but a guy that just does everything well. And you'll you won't be surprised the day that he wins a major. Is and then my, is the U.S. Open no cuts now or no? <laughs> then my parlay, <laughs> my parlay is. I have a top 40 parlay on Eric Cole, Nito Pereira, uh, Patrick Rogers, Cali guy, and then Ryan Fox, who we've talked about. That's plus 2,325. Oh. So I'm I'm happy about that one, one unit. And then Jordan Spieth, Cameron Smith, and Adam Scott, top 20 parlay, uh, 1578. Yeah. What I like about the U.S. Open is because you have so many long shots that make it into this field. You can find a lot of you can find a lot of 600 to one numbers, which to your point, Jordan, probably not going to win. Yeah, but it's kind of fun to have 600 to one on something. Yeah. yeah. What even like what's a top 20 on a, someone like that? It's pretty good. It's better than it's usually like 75. It's going to be 75 to one. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You just hope they get hot two of the four yeah. days and i wouldn't i wouldn't mind a couple of sprinkles there that could be that could be fun um 
Can I end? We didn't get to this early on. Um, it's related. The last time there were, I think there was a USJ event at the Los Angeles Country Club was the 2017 Walker Cup, um, where the, the United States dusted the European team um, in the 46 Walker Cup. What do, um, what do Braden Thornberry and Norman Zhang have in common? I know the answer. Solid, Jordan. Take this one. Uh, the only two people from that team not playing this weekend. Uh, pretty close, I would say. Uh, the only two people from this team work, currently working at McDonald's. Uh, <laughs> uh, on that team, I mean, it's insane. On that team, the players that were there, Cameron Champ, Doug Gim, Stu Hagestad, uh, Maverick McNeely, Colin Morikawa, Doc Redmond, Scotty Scheffler, Thornberry Shong, and Will Zalatoris. Um, Great team. That team has combined for 15 PGA Tour wins, five Corn Ferry Tour wins, uh, three majors, and $100 million in professional earnings. Um, and so I think I just it's just interesting. That you, you look back at that stuff and you say, like, okay, that is, that's kind of the embodies the USGA of just kind of cultivating these amateur golfers. And uh, and almost everybody that is on the, the professional stage has been a part of one of these events. I just don't think you really, really realize it. Um, I'm always just intrigued by someone like Stu Hagestad, who he's, you know, he's played in six major golf, uh, six major golf championships. He is still an amateur. He's probably pushing 40 at this point. And I just imagine him playing on a team with all these young yeah. college players, uh, and just doing that year after year that he selected these things. I think it's pretty funny. Uh, you know, who has the course record here? We've talked about this previously. So yeah, Max- Jordan does. I do. Max Homa. Yep. Oh. Shot a 61 uh, for the Pac-12 championship with his senior year at Cal in 2013. Oh. Just completely dusted the likes of John Rowe, uh, among oh. others. Right. So he's in uh, Colin Marcao was there. And yeah, it was a good feel. It, it, and that's another thing, too. You talk about this being UCLA's home course. I think this course, while it, it's it's not on the, you know, it's not in the major golf. Uh, it's not really in the major golf world. It is part of. You know, amateur golf certainly, um, and so there's a lot of players that have been around here playing well, and uh, I, I think it's just cool to kind of to find some of that out. I don't know that Max's game is there right now. I don't think we're going to see 61 out of him this week. <laughs> no, I. <laughs> but you might see it one day, but not four days. <laughs> yeah, right? like that's. Yeah, I see it on nine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I uh, I really thought this was going to be. I had Max. Do you still have this? this but... Do you still have him? Do you no, bet him? I, no, 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 Max. Uh, I thought about it. Some people are taking futures on Max at like forty to one at at, at Los Angeles, and I think Club. you can get them at thirty five right yeah. now. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm not gonna lie, I thought about it because it's like, oh, are we overlooking something there? And you know, the hometown. Yeah, you can get thirty five, but, but I think the winning number is That's probably nine to ten under eight. eight you to think 10 it's that low? I like think USGA is shooting for like you know a handful of guys under par. I I think I don't think this is going to be a, a negative one, negative two. I think there's enough birdies out there and give them give them a little couple days to figure it out you're going to see some guys implode thursday and friday but i think they'll, they'll kind of figure out where to avoid the show. like a sun j 85 type of implode <laughs> uh but yeah so last 10 us open winners two over par at plus one all the others are minus four or better Interesting, but there was what a 15 16 in there, yeah. One year? Brooks was 16, yeah, Gary fair. Woodland was 13, but that was Pebble Beach, mm-hmm. which can play easy, yeah. And but it's been minus that. six the last three years, yeah. I, I think it's going to be a little lower than that. I think there's going to be some scoring. I think when Bryson won, it's going to be perfect minus six, he was the only a guy under par. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's the funny you think about even you go, you go way back to Tiger Woods in 2000, he was minus 12. Uh, he was also the only guy under par. That's That's right. <laughs> uh, All right. Well, uh, I think we've uh, I, I think we've got it. I think we've covered it. Um, we've got a handful of really good plays this week. Uh, you can find our content. Mosquito check. Oh, mosquito check. You're right before we sign off. Yes. What do you I, think? I'm impressed that I haven't had any mosquitoes buzzing my screen. I'm not being bit. Yeah. I'm not being bit. And before it was on, I, there were like I. There were mosquitoes around. This thing has gotten better. Thermosel, uh, doing a great job. We've been on online for an hour, 
and this mm-hmm. thing has been uh, humming along. Yeah. So uh, thank you, Thermosel. Yeah, and if you're listening and your ad wasn't approved, but please send us money or free golf stuff. Yeah, golf stuff. <laughs> do, you, do you have a golf clip that I can put on my waist to play with this? That'd be great. Keep Ooh, gnats, gnats away as well. Interesting. All right. Yeah, Maybe like, a hat clip like if it. you're out of the baseball Ooh. field. Uh, all right. Well, there you go. We'll, we'll see what Thermosel's got in store for this week. Um, in the meantime, you can find our content on our Twitter feed at RTG Podcast DFS. New episodes of our podcast every Wednesday morning on our YouTube channel, Reading the Green, and on every major podcast platform. Um, we'll be back in a week to talk about this U.S. Open at Los Angeles Country Club. And Kyle, what event comes after the U.S. Open? Travelers. The Travelers. We'll talk about that, too. We'll see Brooks there, apparently. <laughs> right. See ya. See ya.